been tough. It's been a long season. If we can win our game, if they don't pick, give up the maximum points, we will be definitely safe. Right, when certain people who were born in Zebediela, one thing that they did not know was how far they were going to go as far as their careers were concerned. They did not know that they'll be part of a championship winning teams over and over again. And little did they know that they'll be part of Bafana Bafana and also their quest for glory, not only in the African continent, but also internationally. And that is why today we've got the honor, the glory, as well as the leadership skills of none other than Shampo Kekane with us in studio. It's an extra bit of extra time uh, spiced up with so much more. To look forward to tonight, I'm looking forward to it. Are you ready for the journey? That's the big question. Captain, Captain, or Captain, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. And yeah, I'm have you greeted the older people? I have. Okay. I have. Yeah. Did they greet you and, and <laughs> tell you congratulations <laughs> for winning they the championship? Did. They did. Where's the medal? Uh, we're going to get that uh, on Saturday. In Bloemfontein. In Bloemfontein. How are you looking forward to that? It's going to be a very emotional um, day for me. I think uh, with, the, with the fact that I, I played in, in Bloom yeah. and that the team that I chose when I, when I moved from, from, from Supersport mm. and um, winning the, the trophy as a captain of Mabel Sundowns in Bloom for day, it will be a special, special day for me. When I started the show, I said, little did you know, <laughs> Zebe Diela. Yeah to the capital city, to the league championship, African glory, Champions League, etc. There's so much more. Did you ever think all these things would happen to you? Not even. Uh, but I'm um, just um, overwhelmed with the, with the achievement mm -hmm. so far because um, as you, so you mentioned, where <laughs> <laughs> in Makaya. In Makaya, where I'm from. Um, the little I knew about uh, my, my career is when I, I, I joined Black Leopard. Yeah. And uh, I think that was a turning point of, of, of my life mm -hmm. over. And uh, I then uh, realized that I actually can go far with this uh, uh, football business. So I, I took everything uh, aside and yeah. I, I didn't have lifestyle, but I, I chose football to be my lifestyle. So. I'm just happy um, with the sacrifice, uh, not only for my sacrifices, obviously my family, they sacrificed a lot to be, for me to be the person I am today. Now, the, the, the big question overall, though, is that when a moment like this happens, and, and I'm going to ask you to look at your screen, when a moment where coach is being praised for the hard work that he's done, fans have stayed behind to celebrate the victory uh, because they knew what was going on in the other game uh, that featured Orlando Pirates, that things weren't going according to plan. And, I mean, here you are, coach and captain together. What has the leadership been like under this man? Well, I think we, we, we have got uh, understanding uh, like a brother and... Um, an uncle. <laughs> Malu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I understand him yeah. uh, more than I, I used to understand um, uh, him. And uh, I think uh, he asked me to be the captain of the team uh, when, the, when the season started, the previous season. Uh, I, I was not happy with the, with, the, with the request, to be honest, because I, all I wanted to do when I got to Sundance was to play football. and and enjoy football. So I, I, I found uh, that as a huge responsibility for for a guy like me who was very reserved to never um, uh, speak a lot. Mm. Uh, and uh, when I did my 
my research and I try to consult to guys like Surprise, like as Romyan Doro. I remember I went to Denny Mambush to ask if I'm the right person to lead this team. Mm. And uh, I remember uh, Bralex Chakwan came to me to say uh, he has never seen anybody this season or any any uh, now to lead this team but but you and I, f I never I never saw that one coming mm. and I took I think f t four year, four months for me to think about it and it was too Hey man, we shall have a four minds and and pause there because I want to come yeah. back to that. It's an important thing that you mentioned because sometimes you find that great players don't want to be captains. They want to focus on their game because they feel that being part of a leadership pact or being the leader of the pack as well also takes away from your playing ability. Let, let me draw in here the, the, the skills factor of two gentlemen who are leaders themselves, who would have captained uh, their respective teams. Let me start off with my elder on the far side. Uh, Shaft, good to see you back on the show. Thank you very much, Rob. And uh, what's your name? What's I'm in Kansas. Kansas. You are a champion. I can't. It's because of your hard work. Thank you so much. You deserve it. Thank you. I think, Rob, the most important thing that he says, and I think this is a lesson for all the youngsters, football to him, it's a lifestyle. Mm. Once you adopt that mm. and say it is a lifestyle, it means there's sacrifices that you've got to make. Mm. You've got to manage yourself. To the extent that becoming a captain or being given the captain's unbed was probably taking him out of the shell that he had, the protective mm. shell because he wanted to protect himself. Now he's going to share himself. He's going to have people coming to him from time to time to consult with him. He says he's not very vocal. And I know a lot of people. I played, Neil Tovey was very vocal. Lucas Hadeva was never vocal. Sure. You know? And I just want to share this because I shared it with, 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 with the viewers as well, with, with him. Mm -hmm. What you see Sompo doing, and I, I've had the privileges of watching their training sessions, and I think he was not aware that I'm aware that every time yeah. he plays these long-range shots, he has come a billiard with him. All the time. Yeah. When they do their warm-up, Kama billiard is with him. So he does these long-range shots <laughs> with Kama billiard. So that's the rapport they have. And I'm glad that the success that he's had yeah. still humbles him. But that's an amazing observation again, and, and I suppose Shaft in the work that he does as an analyst, as a, a commentator, takes a little bit of his own time to attend the training sessions because, you know, the, the, there's no puravos, meatballs and other things that are offered there. You go there on your own accord uh, because you want to find out a little bit more information. Uh, I mean, sure, Wayne Sandilands, great goalkeeper, but I just think that you contributed very positively to him being on the bench after that. And it's no, it's no fault of yours. You are doing well, because I want people to look at it. I want to bring Jimmy here just now. The first goal is within the first two minutes of a game. Remember, this is no ordinary game. This is a, a Pirates versus Sundowns game. People are still milling outside, still buying a Makota. That was before other listeriosis or diseases became popular. So they were buying their things outside, still trying to get into the game. And boom, there's a goal within the first couple of seconds of a game. Example, surely this changed so many things about this game. Yeah, sure. Uh, but I, I took a chance. Yeah. It was early in the match, and uh, I had to move out of my. Now, okay. <laughs> let me let me make you keep quiet here because now, this is officially called a shampoo keka. <laughs> what you're doing here? It's got a name now. It's got a title. At what point do you decide, you know what, this guy is off his line. I've practiced this, like Brian said. Let me do it. I think uh, I trust my instincts more than anything. Uh, I think my game is based on, on instincts. As you know, I'm not um, one of those uh, talented footballers, skill-wise. I. I trust my instincts. I know when 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 I when I first want to pass the ball, whatever comes to my mind, I do it. So, with the with the incident of the goal, I think um, uh, I controlled the ball in the center line where I I looked around and there was nobody who was pressure me, and I, mm. 
I didn't want to uh, look up because Wayne was going to see me. The only thing I did was to try and be composed as if I'm not going to strike it. Because mm. I was looking, you know, the, I, I could see when he was still on the penalty spot. I could see the socks, I could see everything, but not the face, obviously, because I didn't want to look up. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I. If you look the way I kicked the ball, it wasn't an easy uh, technique to use because yeah. I I was not even facing him. Uh, unlike the other goals that I scored, when I I would have to prepare and 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 shoot. But with that one, it was a difficult one because I didn't have to look up. I didn't have to look where the goals was. I just try to use my mind and. And and, and 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 try to shoot from where I was, and but it's, it's got a, a slight, I mean, chip to it, and 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 I don't know if you know that you're sitting next to a golf champion here in Jimmy Dow, <laughs> uh, who went through to the Super Sport Shootout and 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 and, and, and created <laughs> mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> champ! Thank you so much. Hey. Yo, so when you talk about how that board is sliced, I mean, I'm thinking of what I saw yeah. on the screen when Jimmy was playing in the shootout here, Super Sport, over the weekend. <laughs> and where was it staged? At Legends um, in, in Bulugwai. In Bulugwai, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not far from, uh, yeah. Feeling bored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm saying is that that slice is, is amazing because it has preparation, as Brian said, to it. You don't just do that overnight. It has accuracy and confidence. What, what have you made of his journey to bringing him here, but also just exposing us? I mean, to be, to be nominated, I know Abu Oscarini managed to go. He wasn't part of the top three, but I think this time around, we need to make sure that he is because he repeated the feat. What do you think it takes, though, Jimmy? Look, I think, I think before I even uh, respond to your, yeah. uh, to your question, it's first to congratulate him. Skip. I won't speak in this other language because <laughs> I'll end up swearing. Don't worry, as long as... In okay, But on a serious note, it's just one of just to, to congratulate Ushom. I think he's done really well. But I think it's, it's a trademark that he has built around himself. Yeah. The fact that he's able to execute from far, from set pieces, from open play. And I think that is just a variation of his game. And it's not by fluke. I think it goes um, unnoticed, the fact that he's, he's putting in the effort. Yeah. Uh, he's able to link up with his players. And I think uh, based on that, you can see the output. You can see the result. And I just want to, to obviously encourage him. Mm to not just stop now, um, because there's a lot of people who look up to him. I'm one of those people uh, who then say, this is a guy who really inspires me. You can see with his hard work, um, as he indicated. And he's not really one of those skillful players. But I think his skill is leadership. But his leadership through his own work. Yes, you can see how he links up with Link the up team. Play, yeah. you know? Um, he, he's a quality player and he should not doubt himself. And I think he's one of the players that should really be utilized in the Wafana Wafana setup more often. And I can only wish him the best of luck going forward. And hopefully, this will be more building blocks for him to really uh, reach higher uh, milestones. I mean, that will form part of our, our next batch of discussion, though. The fact that uh, uh, Sundowns next season seemingly might not even have a Kamabiliat, might not even have one of their star players. Maybe there might be a Tao insight in terms of where he possibly could be going to. We have a Tao here, there's a Tao <laughs> as well that is part of Sundowns. And, and just talking about him, I mean, he is at a season and a half. We'll have a look at some of uh, the footage as well that we have here and, and with Tlombo here. Uh, and again, Tlombo, a, a little, again, an intelligent pass, chipping it over, doing just enough to land it in his path. Let me bring an analyst here. Shaft. Come on. There are, there, there are two things, you know, with, with the late Shane Skouan, there are two things. There are two players that you identify certain things with. He pass. When you look at Klompo's, Klompo's game, well, there are times where it becomes robust. We're on a 50-50 situation. But what is his strength? He's finding his teammate. It doesn't matter what type of run you make. He will find you. He passes. And that's what he does. Mm. And what he does, it's not because he doesn't just do it in the field of play. It's all about practice and practice 
which has resulted to him saying it is just instinct now. It is natural because he's aware of the runs that Percy will make. He's aware of the runs that Kama will make. Mm -hmm. But Kama knows the type of pass that he will get when he makes that run. He expects that pass. And this is one thing that he says, which we hadn't listened. And I hope the opponent did not listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the opponent did not hear what you said. Because he says, there was no one in front of me. Mm. And I did, he did not even have to look up. Because Space. when there is someone in front of him, he can't do that. He's forced to play it mm. short. But because of his sharper, because of the positioning as well, and he creates that space. With Wayne Sunderland, he had to create that space for himself. And he didn't have to look up because it comes naturally. He's practiced, he practices it. But with certain teams, obviously they'll try and put someone. But you watch him, he goes deeper. Yeah. When you do that, he goes deeper. But when he goes deeper, he believes in his strength. He believes in the technique. But he's one of those players, he doesn't, when I talk to him about the long range passes, he doesn't, he doesn't indulge. He doesn't talk about himself. Yeah. He says, but come on, it's on the first touch. Mm. He says, it's not about him. Yeah. It's about the recipient of that pass and what he does with that. But isn't that part of good leadership, though? Because it is. that's exactly what we we're talking about. It's, it can't be central to you. It's got to be about the collective. And it's the collective where he's been able to be a part of. Now, one of the things I was going to ask after seeing that clip was how, how have the dynamics changed, though? Because now you've got a new guy, Serenio, is there. Uh, he's coming with his own approach, but it's worked well. Uzwan is an ever-present. Uvilagazi has come through, improved his game. Uh, we talked about him with Jimmy last week on the very same show. Uh, you know, we, we've got so many different components. Kama's there, Persitao's there. What are you making of how, just the attack-mindedness of Sundowns? I think uh, with this, uh, with this uh, current players that we're having, I think we we managed to to find uh, the understanding amongst each other because uh, look, we we relied on on CBD before, yeah, and uh, it worked so well for us. And when when the CBD goes, and we we had to try and look and find uh, other ways of attacking opponents because um, uh, we didn't want to be predictable. Yeah. In terms of uh, if if I've got the ball, uh, obviously every everyone in the league would know that I would wanna try to play uh, behind the, the defenders if we don't wanna play uh, short. Uh, if the opponent studies us, it's difficult for for, for us to to penetrate. So we had to find uh, a way of of of, of dismantling defenders. Obviously, start with short passes and with lots of movement because. Um, there's a lot of hard work the, 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 the front players are doing and uh, it makes the job easier for us to, to find them with the, with the passes and uh, with, the, with the understanding it was something that we really needed because with the number of games that we played we, were, we weren't consistent in the beginning because of um, maybe we didn't understand each other well because maybe we, we, with of the personnel that we, we, we tend to use. Yeah. So we, we found um, a, a solution in, 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 in situation where we really need to vary our game, especially when, when we, we play a team that will, will sit and try to, to, to catch out on, on break. Mm. So we need to be patient on the ball and we need uh, those talented players mm. to try and eliminate in, in front of, of, of the box. Yes. I was, I was going to say, you know, the amazing thing, and as you speak, I'm, I'm visualizing all of this, and, and that's the exciting part about analyzing, guys, is that you sit back here, Jimmy, and, and then you, you start thinking of other factors. You look at a longer man that we never thought would be in a box scoring goals, and he was able to do that towards the end of the season. On the other hand, you've got Morena, who's been there, running his socks off, changes his approach in terms of the game, not just only just being uh, flat out on the wing, but then manages to cut in because now there's a certain understanding with Brocky coming in that they have to impart. There's just so many different dynamics. And as a coach, you're, like, you're not even including Obamani, you're not even talking about any of those guys. Just that attack building up from the back. You know, I think it starts more training um, because I think that is where the stiff competition comes from. Um, there's uh, uh, if, if, if uh, uh, Anel is playing, yeah. uh, Morena is on the bench, and you understand the quality, you understand that you replace quality with quality. So it starts there. And that, what it then results into is uh, an upliftment or an improvement in your own individual game because you start being competitive at training. 
Secondly, you are playing for a big team that is uh, 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 known for, 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 for winning cups or winning leagues and all that. So by, by virtue of that, you've got that added responsibility. Now when you are being given a chance to play, you are supposed to then play within the element, within the coach's instructions, and obviously your own natural talent comes in. And now when seven or eight of those players are, are really doing well, I think it just rubs off everybody else. Hence, you see players like Langerman having a bit of variation in his game, also scoring crucial games. Uh, you have uh, Anelan who has come in very late into the season, obviously because of injuries. You can see the quality. So I think it's more about... What Sanos does at training in terms of the playing personnel, that is not playing because it can only rub off on the guys who are on the field of play. Well, just looking at all the major celebrations that are coming through, we're taking it all in. And you've got to remember that this man, since he joined Sundowns seven years ago, winning three league titles, a TKO title, a Nedbank Cup title, CAF Champions League, and of course the Super Cup as well. And that is why they'll bow down and say, thank you, thank you very much. Fans, thank you as well. The collective, and Brian, in that seat last week was a gentleman called Farukan. He spoke about the conditioning of the players at Sundowns. He talked about their fitness levels, but also the durability of that fitness because it can't just be for one tournament or one cup or the 30 games in the league. Their fitness, durability and everything else has to do with the league race. It has to do with the competition on the continent with Champions League. It has to do with so many other factors as well. But you look at how they are. They finish and there's still a game in hand. The league title is wrapped up. It involves a whole lot of components to it. The technical team plays a key role. I think the psychology as well, because there's demands. You know, the more successful you are, the more demanding it is for you to stay focused to, to the goals that you have. The recovery is also, mm. is also key in terms of that. Obviously, they can't, they can't overload them in terms of the training at this stage. They've got to manage the player. The travelling as well. The travelling yeah. as well. So you've got to be able to manage and rotate the squad. But key for them, of course, will be the concept that we, we've been trying to unpack in terms of the variation of their games. I think I've, 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 I've been privileged to have a game where they'll say, I, I remember they played Chippa United mm. and they won 1-0. And the coach says, all I needed to do was to get the result. Yeah. Because I knew I've got the game, the next game. Yeah. It was not about the most beautiful type of football, but they've got a system as well. And, and Jimmy was talking about how they can play short passing game, they can play the long range shot, but also the variation in terms of Morena that we're talking about, the Langaman, they can also offer the crosses as well. So there is variation in that game, and the coordination has got to, has, has got to work as well. Just quickly coming in there, because we're talking about the travelling aspect of it, and, and I want to bring both of you there. They are, they're yawning. This can't be easy. It can't be nice. <laughs> there are long travels in between. They're asked to buckle up the one moment. They've been given dry rolls that are cold uh, on, the, on the flight. They're listening to music. At times the music is off, but the headphones are still on. You don't even understand what is going on. It's off to a hotel. It's lounging. It's waiting. It's conversation. They run dry. It's food. You've got to eat the right thing. There's no yeah. pub place of cordu and everything else all the time. You have to be in that room. You've got to share with the, a teammate. And again, it's conversation. <coughs> um, you know, it's the duties of taking care of the fans, of signing the autographs. And I think those are things that we take for granted in the life of a professional athlete, especially a, a footballer as well. And before I even get Lombo's comment on the Jimmy, it is something that we cannot look away and say it is easy it isn't you know just waiting for a flight to go to richards bay when you get impatient and there's there's also family i think the sacrifice that uh, the guys put in it's also the sacrifice of the family mm. because they don't get to spend time with their families and um it has an adverse way in terms of affecting you if uh, uh mentally you are not strong because all those long trips, being away from home, takes its toll on, on you as a player. But I think it's understanding the purpose because I believe as footballers or as any other athlete, you've got a purpose to fulfill. And uh, it's obviously uh, trying to, 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 to blossom within your talent. And it takes those sacrifices, traveling and making sure that your contribution is also noticed. And mm. I think also the management of the team, uh, because it's important for them to also understand why are they, are they there in the first place and why them, mm. you know. Uh, so it's a special calling. It's a purpose. And uh, for me, 
the family then becomes very much integral in terms of the support that you get. And you can see that the guys really are really passionate about what they are doing. And it's only through your passion that you can actually grow much better and become more successful mm -hmm. because you put the hard work in it. And those are a lot of sacrifices that the, the players have put in mm -hmm. individually and collectively. So um, I must also compliment the, their, their technical team. I think they just really done well in terms of managing the team because you've got so many stars there and you need to manage personalities, you need mm. to manage performance, mm. you need to manage output, and once you've got players, you, you know that they've got the potential, but because they are not playing, there's an attitude that changes. Yeah. It's then bringing them back into the fold and making sure that they toe the line. All right, talking about uh, towing the line, you could be towed out the house because you're hardly there, and I think what Jimmy talks about is that there's so many major sacrifices, Lombo, that you guys have to make, and that is why we need to sit here and appreciate it, that. You're not lifting a trophy because anybody did you a favor. You've had to make those sacrifices. Yeah, sure. I think I should um, really agree with what Jimmy said. Yeah. Uh, with the sacrifices, so we, we sacrificed, I think, a lot, especially with the last uh, four years when we started uh, mm. trying to play in the Champions League because I remember when we played in, uh, in Dolisi, that was really our turning point of our, yeah. our, our, our uh, continental football. Mm. Because we, we, I remember we, we went there uh, in DRC. There was election uh, soccer there. I remember we had to to hide ourselves, and, and and I remember we had to travel eight hours from one town to another mm -hmm. uh, with a bus. And um, uh, we've been told that uh, the f we're gonna meet <laughs> a chef with coming with the food somewhere. We're gonna meet. Yeah. We end up buying biscuits on the road. We had we end up buying uh, peanuts yeah. Yeah, and on the road as, uh, as we went to... So the chef the, never rocked up? The chef never rocked out. We end up, arri we end up arriving uh, midnight on uh, the other city and we found that the chef didn't cook. Wow. We waited there. The, the rooms were, were not ready. At midnight? Midnight. The, 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 the rooms were not ready. The hotel that we, we, <laughs> we, were, we were booked at it was not the hotel. It's like we were going to. I don't have, uh, have you been to Maravastad <laughs> before? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like Maravastad. Like yeah. yeah, we you even can see those visuals. Yeah. There, not yeah. banana, yeah. Not on the side. Maravastad yeah. is even better because you can see the street. <laughs> there we, we didn't know where we were. Okay. We had to pass the park the bus um, 50 meters away from where we should be. So it's the only time you parked the bus this season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, only time. that's the only time. I think that's the that was uh, actually the, our turning point. Then sure. we didn't we didn't really took took those uh, condition mm -hmm. to our head, and we tried to give up at the first time. We played until we. I remember that the season we really didn't make it to the to the to the Champions League. Correct. And we came back and we. We tried to and it again to go again because we we thought it's doable. We thought if we could beat uh, TB Mas we could uh, draw with TB Mazembe. Okay. No, we played TB Mazembe, loved us, and we won against TB Mazembe. And the, the TB Mazembe at the time was the powerhouse of yeah. African football. And we thought if we could beat TB Mazembe, that means we can we can beat. Uh, your Al Ali, your yes. and we tried, and we said we we need to. Just go and, 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 and enjoy yourself in this tournament and, and, and see where we can end up. <laughs> All right, so this is where he has uh, ended up here. Yo, I mean, what a journey, though, because at, at times we forget in, in how a championship team is made through the eyes of a football player. And that is why today we're giving you that opportunity, a rare one indeed. I mean, we could be asking you lousy questions. So, and, and Zabu, how does it feel? Okay, so, you know. And Zabu, Africa, I'm a man. We had a situation <laughs> one experience. Lapa. Puma Nazovar. Puma Nazovar. Puma Nazovar. So, when I grew up, I was in Tsapa, and the guy started teaching up. So, the late shoes, I was like, I'm a man, 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 I'
There was another situation where I think the players were having um, the ribs and then they brought the, the finger pole. And one of the players took a straw. <laughs> Something like that. Who was that player? I think no shakes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see, hey, no. the preparation. <laughs> I think what we're talking about, it's, 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 it's hilarious stories, it's fun stories, but it, it builds character. Mm -hmm. But let's look at the build up. Yes, and downs. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the preseason here. Mm -hmm. They've been to Ghana. Yeah. For yeah. preseason, right? Yeah. You've been to Zambia because they were preparing themselves for these hostile situations that they will yeah. come across. You know, experiences will teach you a whole lot of things. I yeah. mean, we went to Rwanda and then we complained about a penalty and there was an army pointing. I want to let them let them let Yes, let them 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 let let them let let them let them let them let them let them let them we ended up winning that game 4-1 sure. away. So it, it's all about preparation. And I think for Sundowns, when they went and they failed, they then started saying, let's go out of Africa and do our preseason. And that built and strengthened the mm. character to survive in situations like that. Amazing, amazing stories. Let's quickly recap, though, in terms of your tweets. Sandile uh, Moko also says that, well, you have been the best defensive anchor Mzansi has ever produced. Shombo, I called him, uh, what? Popeye. Okay, I don't know, but yeah, because of his, uh, <laughs> because of his powerful shots. Always down to earth personality, says well done, Klump, okay. Sheikh Rambedi says, well, Sundowns organizing a friendly with Barcelona just simply shows ambition. Brilliant work from your side. Ubonga um, Zangwa says, wonder what comes after Darwin. Billy at Pizza has always been able to rebuild his team. Uh, Uai, she says, I hated when Klombo scores those long-range goals against Pirates. Since the days of Senzo Meiu, <laughs> says, rest in peace. But that's hard work and dedication. Good luck, Klombo. And please try one against Barcelona. I'm going to try one against Barca. Cut in Nepal. Instinct. No, my job has. Under pressure. No, I mean, you saw them. You saw them last night there in the, in, in the El Clasico. Susceptible to pressure, goalkeeper can be caught off guard. A little bit of Sandawana singing in the grandstand. Up is a is a boom. Hi, Shrabi. And Lady D says that what a captain, born leader. And inspired by Klompo <coughs> uh, well-deserved chap. That's Katlech uh, Omake. And the team, congratulations are in order. Um, hmm. I mean, there's so many messages. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, just in, in, in trying to wrap up this, because we can chat until uh, the animal channel kicks in. 32 years old. Five league championships. Three with Sundowns, two with Super Sport United. You've played this season, what, 32 games in all competitions. There's a lot of demand on that body. There's a lot that you have to contend with. What's the bigger thinking? I mean, do you sit back and you reflect and say, do I start winding down? Do you, like the guy that Jimmy mentioned, John Shoes Michaud, push yourself until the end because you're in peak condition? What goes through your mind? I think it's always... Um I always remember why I started playing football because, um, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, that um, I chose football because that's the only thing I, I, I have. Yeah. So when I was young, the only thing I wanted to do was to play football. So it comes with a lot of uh, sacrifice, as Jimmy said, uh, and about um, uh, trying to do what you love. And at the same time, and if you sacrifice a lot of things, mm -hmm. uh, obviously um, your football will, will, will grow. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I remember when I got to Supersport uh, from Black Leopards. Uh, that's the first, the first time where I, I was uh, 
been able to to go to the gym and yes. uh, train um, well in the in the, in the structure team. Mm. And when I got to to Super Sport, I was like, oh, "What are we doing?" <laughs> from from <laughs> Early in the morning, we had to go to the gym, <laughs> and it demanded a lot out of, out of my body. I remember, I got there when um, I got there on Wednesday. We were playing pilots <clears throat> on Friday, and upon my arrival, we went to the gym. Yeah, and uh, I was surprised to see to see the guys were pulling weights there in the gym, and I was there, I was sit I was seated there waiting for my for my for my program. Yeah, because everyone has to. To, to pull his uh, own ways according to the, the body. The body yeah. So I was new, I was with, I waited for the guy to come and, and measure me. Here there was, I was, I was looking and waiting for that guy and the guy gave me the, my program and he started measuring me and he gave me this uh, huge giants. I said, oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no way. <Just> like <laughs> <laughs> I kept looking on, the, on that paper to yeah. see if they, write, they wrote my name properly mm. and that was my name there. Mm. And I had to, <laughs> <laughs> I had, I had to pull those weights and I pulled those weights and I remember they were counting. Counting, uh, it was me. Belembe, Dentlate, uh, Gatla Omashio in one in one group. Yeah. And ah, really, really lightweight. I'm a 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 and then we had to go to, to the field. <laughs> then the training started. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no ways. I think I made the wrong move here. Good <laughs> <laughs> Like you. I need to go back home. I need to go back home. And we trained, and I didn't die. And after training, we took showers and we ate, and I went back to, to, to the lodge where I was staying. Mm. I got there, I slept, woke up in the afternoon. <laughs> the next day? <laughs> the following day? The following day, same thing. Sure. And mind you, we were playing an MTN uh, match on yeah. Friday. So for my first two, two, two days, I had to train like that. Yeah. Hardly time to recover. Hardly time to recover. And had to play a 90 minutes match. But you see the benefits now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see I the do. benefits now. Yeah, I do. I know, I do. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I was going to say that's a final question, but a very important one just popped up on Twitter now um, from Uskonli Sabe Sutu, who says, What makes him so disciplined? And how can we never see him at nightclubs and shisanyamas? That's an important question. <sighs> Take your time. <laughs> Do you mean? <laughs> uh, I think I was uh, fortunate enough to grow up uh, with, with my late brother, mm. uh, the guy who uh, believed in my ability of uh, being a footballer so bad. And uh, when, when, he, when he passed on, I was at Supersport. When, oh, I just won the, my first league medal. And as I was about to come and show him the medal, he was no longer there. Mm. So the, with, the, with the sacrifice and the belief that he had uh, uh, to his younger brother, and I didn't want to disappoint him. And mm. by so doing, there's certain things that I cannot do because um, I'm actually representing people, um, uh, people that are not some are no longer here, mm. and uh, some are, are here, and there's things that I cannot do, mm. even if I want to. So it's no longer about me as a person, it's about other people that I mm. have strong belief in me. My family, my mom, who always um, criticized me whenever I try to shoot from far, I said, how possible can that happen? <laughs> because <laughs> I've never seen anybody do that. Yeah. How do you do that? And, 
that's the, I would say she's my coach at times and um, I always think and um, put myself in, in, in their shoes how proud they are to, to have me as, the, as their family member, as their brother, as their, as their breadwinner. So I need to make sure that I contain myself, I, I, I present myself every time I go to people, I need to, I need to be the, that person who represent people back home. So all the time I try to, by all means, to do that, I, I, I carry a lot of uh, mm. responsibility. My village is looking after <coughs> me. The, the villager that I'm from, Hosi. Yeah, I have <laughs> They are the Kekanas that I, yes, I, I, I are looking yeah. after me. So I have to try by all means to, to, to cut a lot of things that I really want to do for the sake of... To represent um, them thing. and their memories. Oh, <clears throat> Futuwani says, as we wrap up our moments here, and have been very fundamental, insightful moments here with Klombokek kind under of the leader of Mamelodi Sundowns as the captain as well. And I think everybody watching this uh, is sharing the same sentiment here. He says that uh, being Klombokek, it must be a full-time job of being father, brother, pastor, teacher, social worker, because you're surrounded by young lads who can be easily influenced into wrongdoings, keep up being the role model to all the young and upcoming players. Silo Mutabeng says, I hate sundowns more than anything. However, I love Pratlombo and his leadership, and he has shown outside as well as inside of the pitch. He says, big up to you, uh, my brother. Uh, yeah, I mean, Tlombo. We, we should just have a reality show. <laughs> <laughs> just. I think that one, photo one, is a, is a good idea. Bing, Tlombo, Kekani. We follow him with cameras all over the place. And finally, we get to highlight uh, actual people that do actual things. Thank you so much for coming through. I should thank you for having me. Should we see you in Bloemfontein? Yes, you will. Look forward to those celebrations. I can't wait. Look forward to it. Thank you so much, champ. Probably. Thank you for having me. Skipper. Um, good luck, Skipper. You can't just name. Bye. I want to know Tom. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. Thank you. What he didn't share with us is that one of the things that he still wants to achieve is to again go and play Club World Cup. That's fine. They're almost there. Club World Cup. He wants to go back again. It's possible. He'll make it happen. This is an ambitious guy. At 32, he's still extremely young, given his conditioning. And a lot of people are saying on Twitter here, Trump has just made being a mommy's boy cool again. If only we could minus five years of Kekana's <laughs> age, then we'll be okay. Oh, let's take a deep breath as we restart extra time. With some highlights, bright moments. National First Division of the weekend. Go Siami. We'll come back. We'll chat with Mr. Spot on the controversial one. Thank <laughs> you.